right, here's the tea. So last week there was a list of um, topics that we wanted to do for Trivia Ronin. And I wrote them down. And then I wrote one question apiece on each of the topics. The topics were as follows. So this is category one. One will be one question of each of these topics. Movies, food, horticulture, Harry Potter, European history, Disney princesses, things you can stick up your ass that are nutritious, and black history. So there's a question about each of those things. I don't know who wrote things you can stick up your ass that are nutritious. I think Tara wrote it, which is why she's going to be an excellent host. Um, so anyway, that's your only hint. Otherwise, we're just doing trivia. Trivia as usual, everybody. So without further ado... Uh, I thought maybe my college roommate was coming, but I think he just accidentally clicked on the link I emailed him. Uh, <laughs> whoops. But without further ado, away we go. Everyone feeling good? Feeling good? Feeling great? All right. So I'm going to do uh, do my little spiel here. Here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Trivia Ronin. I am your host, Matt McNelly. And whether you're joining us live on Zoom or Twitch or after the fact on YouTube, welcome. We're happy to have you. Quick breakdown of the rules. One, we are honor code here. You keep your own score. Feel free to cheat. You get nothing. Two, after each question, you'll get 45 seconds to answer. Absolutely do not show your answer until time is up. And number three, if you're watching on Twitch due to the delay, drop your answer in the chat. We figured it out about five seconds left on the time clock. Drop it then. That lines up with us live. Tonight, there are going to be 30 questions, as I said. One point apiece, maybe a bonus point sprinkled in, and a story question at the end. Worth 10 points, total of 40 and change. Uh, let's play Trivia Ronin. Away we go. Question number one. Known as the hooligan of English fashion, this British designer gained international fame for outfitting Lady Gaga in a dress made of flank steak. 45 seconds starting now. There were only nine things, so I added a category fashion. This is the fashion question. What is that person's name? The hooligan of English fashion. Or the hooligan of English fashion. Nailed it. This British designer gained international fame for outfitting Lady Gaga in a dress made of flank steak. Who was that person? Lady Gaga. Or plural, Ladies Gaga. If there ever was another one. Seven seconds left. Who is that person? Two, one, the late, the great. Show it, show it, show it, show it. Yes. Ah, uh, Gordon Ramsay, good guess. Tom Ford, very good guess. But it is, yeah, boy, Alexander McQueen. Alexander McQueen, RIP. Good at his job. Question number two. Horticulture. At 86% of gardeners saying they have one. There's no need for at there. This is the most popular homegrown vegetable in America, except it's actually a fruit. 45 seconds starting now. I wrote this very tired. Clearly. Grammar no good. At 80, 86% of gardeners say they have this in their vegetable garden, this plant. Just say what the plant grows. <laughs> Oof. This is why we don't write horticulture questions, Doug. 86% of gardeners say they have one. This is the most popular homegrown vegetable in America. Except it's actually a fruit. No, no, no. Not yet. It's coming. Three, two, one. Most popular homegrown vegetable. Tom Fordados is correct. Yes, everybody got it. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. And question three. Of the nine official Disney princesses, only one ever worked for a living in a restaurant. Which one? 45 seconds starting now. I'll need the name of that princess, please. Again, all questions for people who didn't show up to Wednesday <laughs> Trivia. Next week, I'm doing 10 questions about the Atlanta Falcons. Bell might have been a librarian, but the parentheses is important. 
That's why I put him in. Bell was not a librarian. I'm I'm hearing. Sorry, I'm hearing from uh, from our Disney expert. Let me just text Jonesy real quick. Of the nine official Disney princesses, only one ever worked for a living in a restaurant. Which one? Only one ever worked in a restaurant. How about that? I'm just being sassy. Ariel probably worked pretty hard swimming for a living. That's, that can't be easy. Show them who knows her name. Yes, yes. Marissa knows her name, right? I, oh, no, you don't remember. It's fine. Her name's Tiana. Now we can remember Tiana. Princess and the Frog, Tiana. Don't worry, there's another Disney princess question. It's fine. Question number four. Located in the Shaw neighborhood of Washington, D.C., this historically black university is known across America for its annual homecoming celebration. 45 seconds starting now. Known across America, known explicitly by Ludacris. There's your hint. Located in the Shaw neighborhood of Washington, D.C., this historically black university is known across America for its annual homecoming celebration. Not this year, because nothing fun can happen this year. Yep. Everything's canceled in 2020, including the homecoming at this particular school. <laughs> Go Bison. Three, two, one. Show them. Yep. 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 Oh, no. Steven, more houses in your neck of the woods. We're looking for Howard University. Howard. Homecoming at Howard. It's in that one ludicrous song. Da, 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 da. Homecoming at Howard. This is how it goes. Uh, question five. European history was also a request. What Frank was crowned Emperor of the Romans? On Christmas Day, 800 Common Era. 45 seconds starting now. Frank being a, a, a term for that particular group of humans. Frank, not this person's first name. But if you want to write a funny answer, you know I'm here for it. What Frank was crowned Emperor of the Romans on Christmas Day, 800 C.E.? Used to be AD, but you know, we're non denominational here at Trivia Ronin. Except it's, you know, a question with Christmas and slight hint his his job. His job was vaguely religious. Oh, it's a he. <laughs> Anything before a thousand is obviously a he because the world's terrible. Show him everybody. Jesus, good guess, dead for 800 years. Augustus, also dead. Thomas, great guess. Not Frank. Frank Thomas. I actually wish Frank Thomas had this job. Steven's got it right. Charlemagne. Get along. Get along, kid. Charlemagne. That one was for uh, Harry requested that. Um, also not here. Question six. Harry Potter, during a seven-year span at Hogwarts, this particular subject was taught by a different professor every year, including Severus Snape, Gilderoy Lockhart, and Remus Lupin. 45 seconds starting now. I'm gonna need. Uh, I'm gonna need the full name. Of the course, like if I was at, uh, if I was at the uh, Hogwarts registrar. By the way, somebody's got to do that sketch, but if I'm at the Hogwarts registrar. I enroll in this class. This is what's on my uh, schedule. Gilderoy Lockhart, Kenny Branagh, guys. Excellent work by Kenny, 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 Bran, Bran. Another man who can rock this real well. Three, two, one, show him. Yep, 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 yep. Many people got it. Potions is a good guess. It is defense against the dark arts. I will accept dark arts because that was the name of it in uh, year seven. Year Annie, 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 Shelto, and Chicken, Chicken, Parm, Parm. It's in, it's in all of them. Uh, question seven, food. Also known as an egg mushroom, this term, the term for this fungi is derived from a Latin phrase meaning little cup. 
45 seconds starting meow if you know your latin first question why also known as an egg mushroom. I've never heard them called an egg mushroom, but that's what's in the question. The term for this fungi is derived from a Latin phrase meaning little cup. Straw sounds. Trying to be an ASMR channel, guys. Doug and I looking for every revenue stream. Sorry, just... Three, two, one. That was gross. Show them. Yeah, good guess. Oh, oh, so close. Dude, so close. It's Chanterelle. I know. It should be Cremini, but it's Chanterelle. It's fine. That's just one of those ones. I wanted to do a really obnoxious food question, um, and I did. And there it was. Question eight. This one's less annoying. It's on film. Bill Murray and Ivan Reitman work together on many films, including Ghostbusters and Stripes. Those are two titles of films. But their first was named after what food item? Dean's got it. 45 seconds starting now. First movie these two titans teamed up on. The title is simply a dish. Both, because they, they are same, but the title. The title being, good point, the title being plural. That's a hint. Another hint, I was going to name my band this in college. Never had the guts. Three, two, one, cloudy with a chance of show them. Not Groundhog Days. Yep, yep, yep. I knew Dean had it. Meatballs. Meatballs was the name of that movie. Ladies question, question nine. Top freedom is a feminist movement in the United States fighting to allow women to be topless in any place where men may do so. Since 2012, what is their areola-related rallying cry? I try to say that five times fast, starting now. Well, kind of. Okay. Yeah, so you tried. Definitely tried. 32 seconds. What is their areola-related rallying cry? Still on my first drink. Obviously. Top freedom. I feel like Top Freedom could refer to a lot of things, but I didn't know this movement was called Top Freedom, but it is. Show them. What do they say? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I like, I'm going to pitch nipples now to them with an exclamation point, but it is free the nipple. Free the nipple, please. And the question we've all been waiting for. While not the most nutritious green vegetable, providing only 67 kilojoules of food energy on average, it's easily shoved up one's rectum. 45 seconds starting now. This is things you can stick up your ass that are nutritious for those keeping score at home. Whoa, very interesting. I'll give everyone a hint. Just pick something green. That's been up Steven's ass. I didn't know it was this non-nutritious, though, interestingly enough. It's not that thing you think of is not nutritious, right? There's that thing. It's not that. Easily, this thing can just... It's not that easy, but, like, if you were gonna stick something up your ass, you would stick this up your ass. It's my only hint. <laughs> Two, one, show them. <laughs> sure. Uh, I'm gonna give everyone a point on this one anyway. Doug, don't worry about it. You you thought it you thought it too much. Take the point anyway. It's cucumber. It's cucumber, guys. It's cucumber. Uh, great. All right. So that's that's round one. No more asshole asshole vegetable questions. Um, where are we at, guys? 
Scores. Scores going into the break. Big five for Chris. Eight for Pud. Five for Emily. Mercer. Big four. Big four for Doug. All right. Anybody's game. Anybody's game. The Pud man swinging big as usual, but you know. Next round is Silly Potpourri. That's just what we do. Take three minutes. Have a good time. I'll see you shortly. Bye. All right. Um, let me make sure I'm set up for the next round. Ooh, I like the next question. It's, it's, it's nice to be reminded sometimes. Sometimes it's a good question. Um, cool. So we're all back. We're going to keep on flying. Keep on cruising. Um... So, everybody ready? Thumbs up. Good. Great. Grand. Awesome. Question number 11. In 1917, Dadaist Marcel Duchamp submitted his work Fountain to the Society of Independent Artists, spurring one of the earliest deba debates. I can't. You can read it, right? On the nature of art. What was the fountain? Starting now. Let me say it again. In 1917, Dadaist... That's an art movement. Marcel Duchamp submitted a work entitled Fountain to the Society of Independent Artists, spurring one of the earliest debates on the nature of art, i.e. what is art. But in the meantime, what was the fountain? Hint, it was a thing. He just submitted a thing. If you're like, is it that thing? It's probably that. He signed it R. Mutt. That doesn't give you anything, but just so you know. R. Mutt. Some French dude. Two, one, show him who's got it. I'm sure some people will. Yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of, kind of. You know what? This is a tough one. A blank page is a really good guess. It was a urinal, i.e. fountain urinal. I'll give you toilet, though. I'll give you toilet. That was a tough one. Anyone who wrote toilet, take it. And at some point, you can pee on a blank page. So, you know, half point for that, too. <laughs> Question 12. Man-made Lake Mead is the largest reservoir in the United States by volume when full. What structure is responsible for impounding it? I just learned that word today. 45 seconds starting now. Didn't learn the word. Learned that it meant this. I'll explain at the end, but I'm just going to keep that there for now. If you know what Lake Mead is, this will be, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's an awkwardly worded question. And many are tonight. If you said that about all the questions, you would be correct. Lake Mead is the largest reservoir in the United States, which is what I wanted to write until I Googled it. And they were like, well, technically, only when it's full and like, you know, water's difficult. But what structure exactly, Stephen? That's a hint right there. It's in a place where sometimes there's not a lot of water. Five, four, three, two, one. What man-made structure created Lake Mead? Yeah, 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 yeah. Many people got it. Many people got it. Impounding is the term for when a dam creates a lake. Fun fact. And in this case, the Hoover Dam impounded Lake Mead. Why is that the term? Don't know. Not a scientist. But the Hoover Dam, if you're on Hoover Dam, you get the points. Question 13. The popular teen drama Riverdale, entering its fifth season in 2021, is based on characters from what comic franchise? 45 seconds starting now. Riverdale. And I'm super generous tonight, so if you can write, like, any of the comic books. I was introduced to this comic franchise through a separate comic book. That's not the term for it, but I'll allow it. That's all. The popular teen drama Riverdale that I've never watched is based on characters from what comic franchise? People tell me it's good. I hear it's Jumping the Shark this season, if anyone's watching it, but I am not. Ten seconds left. Three. Two, one, who's got it? Who's got it? Yep, 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 yep. They, thank God they're not the Justice League. They are Archie Comics, so 
I was gonna. I read Betty and Veronica originally, cause them's be the babes. And I was like, why are they with this schlub? Oh, I also like question fourteen. Here we go. Archie Comics. If you wrote it, if you wrote Archie, you get a point. Question fourteen: Chinese Rhino Horn Cups, a collection of Boston baseball memorabilia from the eighteen seventies and a mid nineteenth century Navajo blanket, are among the most valuable items seen on what? TV series. 45 seconds starting now. And I'll do a trivia thing here. What long running TV series? Got to put long running in there. It's more like a show. TV show. But maybe I didn't write show for a reason. But why wouldn't you write show, Matt? Is it part of the answer? I don't know so generous today twelve seconds left Chinese rhino horn cups I feel like those look awesome Boston baseball memorabilia of course anyone will pay any amount of money for those what do we got what's the show called Muppet shows a good guess mash good guess but yes it is that show that's about items that cost money it's the Antiques Roadshow. The Antiques Roadshow, that show about antiques. Question 15. Jane, Mary, Kitty, Lydia, and Elizabeth are the names of the five Bennett sisters in the classic 1813 novel written by whom? 45 seconds, starting meow. Elizabeth Bennett. Uh-oh. Move the questions up so high they disappeared for a second. Don't worry, they're back. Jane, Mary, Catherine, a.k.a. Kitty, Lydia, and Elizabeth. The names of the five Bennett sisters. In a classic novel written by whom? Some people are having trouble. I'll, two seconds left. It's Pride and Prejudice is the novel. Who wrote it? <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> Excellent, Doug. That's how I remember my authors. I decide what state their last name <laughs> sounds like a city in and then pick a different city. Jane Austen, not Jane Dallas. Jane Austen's her name. Jane Austen. Question 16 where my Holbrook head's at. In college, Hal Holbrook conceived a one-man show about a historical figure that he would perform over 2,000 times, including on Broadway. Who was that show about? 45 seconds. Obligatory theater question. I'm that guy. If you know who Hal Holbrook is, it's real obvious that he would have made this show. R.I.P. Hal Holbrook. In college, Hal Holbrook conceived a one-man show about a historical figure that he would perform over 2,000 times, including on Broadway, where he won a Tony for it in the 60s. True story. And also, he would live the rest of his life looking a lot like this person. Even though probably at the time he didn't, he grew to look like this person, which is fascinating. Three, two, one, show him. Yep, if you knew it, you knew it. It's fine. It is. <laughs> Hitler, good guess. It's Mark Twain. Hal Holbrook looks like Mark Twain. Good work, Doug. Mark Twain. Don't worry, this one's a gimme. Question 17. While they're both 12 and 7 string varieties, a guitar usually has how many strings? 45 seconds starting now. How many strings on a regular guitar? I've had uh, I've had a two string guitar in the past, but that was just because I didn't put any other strings on it. But when strung correctly, <laughs> how many strings doth a guitar have? Ten seconds left. 
Sethron, excellent question that I'm going to posit to the group. 2 1, show them. Yep, 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 yep. Six, six string guitar. Marissa knows because she has to look at them all the time because I have too many of them. Six strings. Uh, Sethron posits Imagine if Archie was your favorite comic. And I honestly cannot. <laughs> I refuse. Again, culinary questions. Sorry, guys. Wrote a bunch of questions for uh, the complainers. And the reason you don't do that is because they, they don't show up. Question 18. Bernays sauce, which is made with egg yolks, white wine vinegar, clarified butter, and herbs, is considered a daughter sauce of what? 45 seconds starting now. So if you know your French cuisine, you know there's mother sauces and if i was if i was answering this question i'd say well what sauce is a lot like that in french cuisine because it's about the thought process guys i'll give you a hint one of the mother sauces is tomato true story and this is tomato is not the answer Doug, write something else. <laughs> you got six seconds. It's not tomato. There are no tomatoes in the sauce. Three, two, one, show them. And if you were also thinking, is it just the one sauce that I kind of know? French dressing, point for that. Uh, but also hollandaise, point for that. Everybody gets a point for hollandaise, the one sauce we all know because it goes on our eggs. Question 19. Emily, not a fan of hollandaise. Audio Slave was a super group formed in 2001 from members of Rage Against the Machine. And what vocalists? 45 seconds starting now. I'll need the vocalist's name. Not the band. Yep, Emily knows it. I would sing here, but I do way too spot on of an impression. Too, too good at it. I would give it away. Burning that gasoline. There you go. I couldn't help it, guys. Couldn't help it. No, that wasn't a recording of Audio Slave. It was me, guys. Three, two, one. What's that guy's name? He's dead. Pick a dead guy. Yep. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> Yes, though. Yes to everyone else. Chris Cornell. I don't want to talk about it, Doug. I don't want to talk about it either. <laughs> Soundgarden frontman. Chris Cornell. Don't worry. Question 20 is real easy. It's short. A place that turns animal hides into leather is called what? 45 seconds starting now. It was called a what? I suppose I should say. I'd like to get our grammar right here. A place that turns animal hides into leather professionally. Although if you were going to write down like my kitchen, will you have things to talk about? Namely, proper ventilation. Very risky. Very risky to run one of these in your home. Does it really? Oh... Uh... So if you had a pot to piss in, you could sell it. Interesting. Then that is fucking amazing and a good story. Two, one, show them. Yep, yep, yep. Not named for the sun, but actually named for tannins. Tannery is what we're looking for. A tannery. A tannery, governor. Um, great. Two rounds down. How are we looking? What's the scores at? Million points for Doug. 15. Dang, son. Excellent work. 16 for Pud. Whoa, this got interesting. 14 for Emily. Chris, sorry, I missed a 10. 7. We'll call it 10. Marissa, um, Infinity? Hey, 8's good. 8's always good. So, uh, we're going to a three-minute break, guys. Uh... It's saying 17 minutes on my screen, but it will not say that shortly. Uh, go get yourself in the cocktail. See you soon. Bye. Um, interesting. Well, guys, I'm going to have this little, this fun little twinkling star over my shoulder for round three. Um, 
Round three, Wayla time. Uh, stop, Wayla time. Um, I'm not, there's nothing, there's nothing interesting about it. We're just going to do Wayla. <laughs> Ten questions. We're going to ask you what you're looking at. Uh, you guys know the drill. Sethron says, it's my shining star of my shoulder. Thank you so much. You're my personal Jiminy Cricket. Is that a thing? Sure, that's a thing. Anyway, uh, 10 things we're looking at. It's pr a pretty close race, guys, so let's go away with question number one. What's the name of this vehicle? 45 seconds starting now. People in the military call this something. What do they call it? What is it? Five miles per gallon on this thing? Something awesome like that. USA. USA. Anyone ever been in one? Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I feel small in them. As a six foot four, 200 and blank, 200 and a quarter pound man. I feel small in these automobiles. Show them what do we got. I will accept two things. I'll accept Humvee or Hummer. Yes, that's fine. Hummer or Humvee, we'll accept them. Humvee, I believe, is the correct nomenclature, but we'll accept Hummer, you know, because that's what makes money. Question two. <gasps> Interesting. Wait a minute. Is it going to show up? Nope, it's not, because you know why? Now it will. Hey, question two. What are them, what are them balls? <laughs> that's how I'll ask it. What are them balls called? 45 seconds on the clock starting now promise it's supposed to be great not the flatbread not the pickles not the salad but what are those little balls called someone pull the audio who's pranks in the hood 48 doug do we know i'm excited Hope it's someone new. Hey, Pranks in the Hood 48. They called that a Fiat. The Humvee. Because big car, small car. Eight seconds left. What are these balls here? Three, two, one. If you don't get it, I will feel awful. Thank you, Doug. Falafel. Nailed it. All skate on this one. Falafel was the answer. Yep, fair. You got, you got there. Question three. This is an iconic album cover by the band In Sync. What's the name of the album? 45 seconds starting now. Give you a hint. It's pretty much in there. If I'm going to do an obnoxious boy band question, which I clearly am, I'm going to do this one. I believe we had Bye 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 on here. I think we had Turn Up My Heart, but maybe that's on the first one. This isn't the first one. Yep. We had Dirty Pop on this one. Thank you, Doug. Classic. But what's the name of the album? If you were pitching me the photo for this album and I knew the name, I would say that's a little on the nose. That's my hint. A little bit on the nose. This is the band Justin Timberlake and four other guys, and their album was called, show them. Yep, 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 yep. Hell yeah, everybody. Puppets on a String is a good guess, but it's actually no strings attached. Puppets on a String would, yes, be the most on the nose, but no strings attached was the name of that album. Next one. Hoo-hoo, I got to ask for more STEM questions. What is the name of this? 45 seconds starting now. What is this thing? It has a specific name in the scientific community. Used for measuring liquids. I got to ask for more STEM questions, and then they didn't show up. <laughs> Just for the record, everyone on this trivia, the next time we do a big one, gets an extra point because we actually listened to the terrorists. <laughs> I should never let the terrorists win. 
And the terrorists are people who come to trivia night on Wednesday, apparently. The terrorists, thank you. We let's don't <laughs> we don't negotiate with terrorists. Four, three, two, one, show um. There's a term for this. I know you're gonna remember it. It's not a thank you. Okay, Steven got it. It is a graduated cylinder. Yes, that is the term for this. Graduated cylinder is the name. Yeah, I had to learn it in science. Did anyone learn that in science class? Does that ring a bell to you, Doug? Not at all? Okay, whatever. Too busy, too busy sucking face. That's also fair. Next. Oh, here they are. The gang's hanging out. We got, what, Jesse and the other one and Zach and the other one. Where are they hanging out, though? 45 seconds starting now. What's the name of this restaurant? Saved by the Bell is the name of the show. What restaurant are they in? I'm asking this for the kids because this show just came out on Peacock. We're all watching Peacock, right? Just like just like they wanted. Everybody's watching Peacock. AC Slater's on it. And Jesse, actually. I think all four of them are on it, but just they're recurring. But what is the name of this restaurant? Also an eatery in West Hollywood for a hot minute. They did a pop-up on La Brea and Santa Monica. It's now Good Burger. Oh, was it good? Pollos Hermanos? Surprise. It might as well be one of those, Chris. You're essentially right on that. The Peach Pit pop-up. Good guess. <laughs> Wait, which one was the Peach Pit? Because it is, it is the Max. 90210, thank you so much. It is the Max is the name of this fucking restaurant that... that abc one it was this show who cares the max the max who's this 45 seconds starting now who's this actress dated photo weirdly enough if you google this actress almost all of her photos are dated from a certain period in like the mid 90s but if you look she still looks great i just picked the best one I picked the I picked the first one in the Bing search. Fun fact, we be binging here at Trivia Ronin. We're binging all the time. Suck it, Sergey. We be binging. Ten seconds left. Who's this actress? What's her name? Her name, 2-1, is yes, yes, yes. You can see her pictured with Marissa Pistone. It's the name of our cat, Uma Thurman. There she is. That skinny Hollywood type right behind her. Uma Thurman is this woman's name. Still. Uh, this is the logo for a liquor. In fact, uh, everybody still looks puzzled. It's a tequila brand. What is it? 45 seconds starting now. This is the logo for a tequila company. Marissa, if you look across from you, you'll see it in our living room. On the barrel. Nailed it. <laughs> Collusion. Yep, you've seen this a lot. You've just seen it with words. That's what I like about Wayla sometimes. I take things you usually see with words, and I get rid of the words, and it confuses you. But I think we'll all get this one. This is tequila. It's not horny toes. Logo tequila is so good, by the way. My favorite. But yes, it is Patron. Patron has this B logo for reasons that I don't understand, but it is on every bottle of Patron. It's one of those ones. It's fine. Boom. I blocked it out. This is a super trendy kitchen gadget. 45 seconds. What's it called? Tell me what it's called or tell me the name of the company because that's the same thing in this case. Be real funny if it said it somewhere else on there and I thought I blocked out the logo. One of them buttons. Trendy kitchen gadget. Black Friday deal. You guys don't know, though, because you was, you was too busy playing trivia. Smart. Because my Black Friday stuff is rolling in, and I'm like, why did I buy that? 
Bought a new power strip, though. I'm proud of that. Needed. Needed for Trivia Ronin. More outlets. Three, two, one. What is this thing? Fuck that logo, Doug. Correct. Crockpot is right. Air Fryer is also kind of right because it can be both, but it's called an Instant Pot. This is an Instant Pot. This is what they look like, Instant Pot. Uh, but there is a one that is an air fryer and there is one that's a crock pot in the sense that you could just cook stuff in it. Instant pot's the real answer though. Next. Don't worry, Disney Disney Princess question for redemption. Name both the people in this for two points, please. And they're not people, sorry. Name <laughs> name the young woman and the dragon. Forty five seconds starting now. Disney Princess Redemption. If you forgot Tiana, you can remember this one. I know, right? That's why I put the in the in a restaurant quotations because definitely not in a restaurant. Although I was reading this article in the Times today about a um, a mochi place in Kyoto that's been open for a thousand years. I was like, dude, but OG Mochi doesn't have ice cream. OG Mochi is just like sweetened, like miso paste, sweetened rice paste. Anyway, what are the two things in this? Mulan is correct for one of them. The other answer is Mushu. Yes, Mushu is Eddie Murphy, the dragon's name. Is it Eddie Murphy? It is, right? Shit. So he was Mushu and then he was Donkey? Man, getting that sidekick money. I know, right? Getting that sidekick money. One's not Disney. It's fine. I know. One is DreamWorks. One is Disney. Thank you, Doug. Uh, that is worth two. If you got both, it's worth two. If you got Mulan, it's worth one. If you got Mushu, it's worth one. And then is that? Oh, no. Yay. My favorite question. Uh, this is an AMF. I'm so sorry to show it to you. You probably haven't seen one in a while for good reason. Uh, what does AMF stand for, though, in this cocktail? 45 seconds starting now. This is the obligatory Doug and Matt. Do a naughty word question. <laughs> Hint, there's a naughty word. AMF. I'll make one for you real quick. I'll do it with sense memory. Seventeen. There you go. That's Matt at St. Felix on Friday night. Seventeen, bro? Yeah. You're terrible. Ah, so glad restaurants are closed. Just kidding. I'm unemployed, but whatever. Whatever. I'm busy. Three, two, one. Show them AMF stands for yes. Yes, if you didn't want to. It is indeed a motherfucker. It is an adios motherfucker. Alcohol motherfucker is a good guess, but adios motherfucker. That brings us to the stop sign. Where are we at, kids? Final scores going into story time. 23 for Doug. Chris, the big 15. 27, 18. MRSA, a million. Yep. <laughs> yep, one million. Uh, it's anyone's game except Marissa has a million. Um, but otherwise, it's anybody's game. So three-minute break. As per usual, when we come back, story time. Here's your hint. My face. 18 minutes until story time. Just kidding. I'm going to stop right there. My story today is inspired because I uh, shaved my beard, got to this point, and stopped. And then I was like, I look like somebody, kind of. That's the story. So we're going to talk about a weirdo today. Uh, it's weird times, so you might as well talk about a weird guy. This guy, born in 1940 in Baltimore. Uh, his birth name is his stage name. I always thought he had a stage name because of how his name sounds, but on his birth certificate is his stage name. Um, his father was a defense contractor. He worked, or sorry, he worked for the defense department. So he grew up near the Aberdeen Proving Grounds, which if you've been to the mid-Atlantic States, it's a big, uh, testing ground for ordinance. Um, grew up right next to it. It's where they store chemical weapons, including mustard gas. So this person grew up with, uh, learning how to do gas mask drills and had gas masks in his house growing up, which affected what he would later do in some ways. 
Uh, he had pretty serious health problems growing up. He had asthma. He had earaches. He had sinus problems. Uh, the way one doctor dealt with those sinus problems is he would put – this was apparently a treatment at the time. He put um, radium tablets up his nose to try and solve the sinus problems, which I guess was a thing. So did that several times. Didn't work. Uh, no surprise there. He stayed fairly sick. The family finally says, you know what? We got to get this kid better. So when he was 12, they moved to Southern California. They jump around a little bit, but they end up in San Diego. So uh, this guy goes to Mission Bay High School in San Diego. He plays drums in bands to start. He starts building up a fairly prolific record collection. He buys up as many blues albums as he can find, as many doo-wop albums as he can find, and also a bunch of classical music, which he was into. He was just super eclectic in all his musical tastes. Apparently, according according to this person, he read an article in Look Magazine, which was a big deal back in the 60s, uh, about Sam Goody. When it was first coming out, Sam Goody, the record store, which uh, was a record store. Uh, we're all old here. We know what Sam Goody is. Um, so a spokesman in the magazine was bragging about the selection at Sam Goody and saying, we are such a big record company that we can afford – we can even sell obscure records like the complete works of Edward Varese, Volume One. Edward Varese is a um, he's a composer. He's like a modern composer, uh, French born, but spent most of his time in New York. Uh, he describes his music himself. He describes his music as organized noise. Most of his arrangements are simply for percussion. Uh, they're kind of awesome to listen to, but also they are definitely organized noise now this person we're talking about reads that article says obscure like the complete works of blah blah he writes down the name of that record goes out tries to find it uh he spends a year looking for it including going to sam goody's where they don't have it and he's like what the fuck i read this in a magazine finally finds it in a record store uh he doesn't have enough cash to buy this record he convinces the clerk to sell it to him at a discount because no one's buying it he gets this complete works of edward Varese. That man becomes a hero of his for his entire life. This man who write, arranges organized noise is a crazy modern composer. This guy loves him. So this guy, he sticks with music all through high school. That's really his only constant because he moves six high schools. He goes to six different schools throughout his time there. Um, he, Even though he moves schools, he still somehow stays cool with all the music teachers. He ends up composing, arranging, and conducting his own pieces of music for his high school orchestra, which sounds bonkers to me. Um Went to college for one semester. He hated it so much. He dropped out of school. He swore off education for his entire life to the point that he doesn't allow his children to go to school after age 15. He pulls all his kids out of school at age 15 and says, I'm not going to pay for your college if you want to go to college. None of his kids went to college. Um, they all did okay. Sidebar. Um, so what does he do? He works as a composer for films because he's in Southern California. He goes up to the Los Angeles area. He starts uh, to do scores for films and arrangements for films. Uh, he moves into a recording studio in Cucamonga, California. Um, works for 12 hours a day while he's there. He moves into that studio eventually. First, he only works there. He moves in, works for 12 hours a day. He starts messing around with overdubbing and manipulating tapes, doing all that stuff. Um, during that time, he gets mentioned in a local newspaper where the newspaper calls him the movie king of Cucamonga quote unquote, because he's been working on so many movies. However, the Vice Squad reads that. And remember, Rancho Cucamonga in the Valley, there's a budding porno industry in the 70s. The Vice Squad reads it and says, movie king, is this guy, is this guy making pornos? So they then <laughs> stage a sting where an undercover officer goes in, offers this guy a hundred bucks to record an audio tape, an audio tape of two people having sex says, I'll give you a hundred bucks. My buddy's got a bachelor party. I want a recording of two people fucking. So this guy goes, sure, no problem. So uh, he records him and a lady friend fake fucking for 30 minutes. Takes the tape, gives it to the guy. The guy says, cool. Now you're under arrest for, I believe, conspiracy to commit pornography, which apparently was a crime back then. Uh, homeboy gets arrested. They raid his studio and take all his records, everything he's recorded at the time. Uh, the cop sees it. Uh, eventually, he ends up getting 30% of it back, but most of it gets lost. Um, from then on, this man hates authority figures. So many things going on in his life. Uh, shortly after he forms a band, the band is called the Mothers of Invention. Mother being short for motherfuckers, not actually mothers. 
because uh, he used that term motherfuckers as in these motherfuckers are good at music. Calls his band the Mothers of Invention. They release a few albums. Eventually that band breaks up. And then by, I want to say the mid 70s, he starts going solo. This man releases 62 albums in his lifetime and later 50 posthumous albums for a total of 112. One of those albums, probably his most famous, is called Apostrophe, simply an apostrophe. Um, that has his first top 100 hit on it. That song is called Don't Eat the Yellow Snow. Uh, other albums he released, Shake Your Booty, spelled shake like Arab shake, Thing Fish, and Make a Jazz Noise Here. Uh, and our guy is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He has a Lifetime Achievement Grammy, and he is dead. He died in 1994. He's been survived by his children, Moon Unit, Dweezil, Ahmet, and Diva Muffet. And maybe most famously... He rocked this facial hair structure. 45 seconds on the clock. Who the hell am I talking about? Start. Famous musician. That's just his youth. Plink, plink. Who am I talking about? His children. Diva Muffin. Dweezel. Amet. And Moon Unit. And he's got a fun name. That's his birth name. 15 seconds left. Ah, that is a good one by Seth Ron. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The Mothers of Invention were headed by good guess on Kirk. Bane. Oh no, it's Frank Zappa. Well done, Emily. Well done, Douglas. Who? Frank Zappa. I thought more people knew his facial hair. That was really the whole thing was just building up to him having silly facial hair. I don't have quite the stash as Frank Zappa had, but yes, Frank Zappa. Birth name Frank Zappa on his birth certificate. He thought he was named after his father, Francis. He was not. It said Frank. Show him, guys. What are the final scores? Thumbs down on the pud, man. So who got a 28, oh, 33 for Doug? Giving Emily a chance and then fucking knocking it down. I wrote Zappa just for you guys, too, before you were mocking the Bears. I was like, you know who's going to get this? Fucking Emily and Dean. But Doug got it. Dweezil Zappa. Yeah, Moon Unit Zappa is the one I remember. Uh, Great. All right. I know, right? So uh, anyway, guys, we did it. All the scores went Zap, Sethron. Sethron nailed Zappa. So that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you so much for your support as we try to grow this experience. It is totally in the script to say that, but it doesn't make it any less true. For all of us at Trivia Ronin, my name is Matt McNelly saying don't be shitty, and we're hoping you learned something. Bye-bye.